thank you for checking out this video. So basically, I got married a few weeks ago, middle of April, and uh, I had to make a wine box for our wedding. And uh, long story short, I wanted to make it cool. Um, but I didn't have a lot of time because we decided a little bit last minute that we were going to do it. Um, but I wanted it to be cool still, and so I decided to do something I have never done before, which is power carving. And that's where you take power tools to do carving instead of hand carving tools like the name implies. Hey. Um, so anyways, uh, I'd never done it, and so I did a few practice runs on some scrap, which you'll see here on the screen now. And uh, then I went about doing it on some walnut. Now, I didn't have time to film it, unfortunately, because I was under a time crunch. But I still had some walnut left from the big chunk that I bought. So I decided I'd make another similar piece using the same techniques. Now, this is not going to be the top to a box. This is going to be a wall hanging. And I think I'm going to send it to a YouTuber who just started a new shop, um, David Welder. I really like what he does. So I figured I'd send it to him. Uh, anyways, so uh, as a wall hanging, something like that. So anyways, um, I made this piece in the video that you're about to see, and it's similar to this wine box back here, which I'll throw on the screen now. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. And uh, I'm definitely going to keep trying at this and trying to learn more and see what I can do. Hopefully do some larger scale pieces um, and kind of see where I can take it. Um, you may see more videos with this in the future. Who knows? Uh, anyways, check this video out, and thanks again. Yeah, I'm just reviewing the board, checking what side I want to carve. Um, if I could do it over again, I might have chosen the other side. You'll see in the finished piece there's some kind of rings on some of the carved ridges. I think that's actually part of the pith of the board. Um, and it might have been more pleasing to the eye had I carved from the other side. But it still looks pretty cool. And, you know, that's one of the things I'm always learning is how to read the grain and wood and all that. Here I'm just marking my design out with chalk. Um, looking at one of my earlier sample pieces because I liked it and kind of wanted to mimic it if I could. So you kind of wipe and adjust, you know, really particular about how those curves come out and how they relate to each other. I've always kind of liked organic abstracts like this. Even since I was a kid, I used to draw stuff like this on my paper bag book covers and all that kind of stuff. So here I'm, I'm scoring with a wheel on my grinder called a Holy Galahad wheel made by King Arthur Tools. Here's kind of a close-up of that. Um, just a standard DeWalt grinder. And this, this wheel is actually really great. This one has a flat profile, which is good for the scoring and also good for some of the shaping if you want. Um, I tried a little shaping here with it, but it's not primarily what I did for shaping. I just used it for scoring for the most part. And you notice I'm hooked up to a ladder here, clamped to a ladder. It was actually pretty handy because it was just a portable, portable stand I could bring out into the driveway and it allowed me to clamp the piece at different heights and have it sticking out from the ladder so I could get around it, which was pretty cool. Now for a lot of the shaping here, I used the Festo RO90 with 40 grit paper. Um, that really did pretty well for me, actually. The small size of the, of the pad there really kind of helped out, as well as the different modes of the sander. You know, there's a rotary mode, which I'm using right now, which is more aggressive. Um, that's the Rotex mode, they call it. And that really helped take some material off. Here, I kind of was going back and forth, experimenting with different tools. So went back to the King Arthur disc on the grinder. That was cool, but it takes off so much that I don't really, I don't really like it for the shaping. Here I'm actually trying something a little different. It's the Festo RAS115 sander, uh, which a lot of people like for power carving. Um, I tried it. I don't know if I'm fully sold on it. Um, it gave me a lot of control, and I liked using it, but the pad just got disintegrated way too fast. So I'm gonna keep trying to get to know it. If not, I might return it under their, uh, under their guarantee because it's a bit expensive for something if it doesn't. Uh, do exactly what you're hoping it does. With a lot of their tools, you kind of got to get to know them though, so I'll, I'll, I'll check it out another week or so, and then if I don't think it's doing good, then I will send it on back. And you'll see here those black streaks that end up on the walnut. That's actually the pad getting torn up. I was sanding up next to a sharp part, and the sharp part really tore that pad up. And it's their soft pad, which didn't help. You see how much smaller the pad is compared to the sandpaper. That was after it got torn up. Um, previously, it was the same diameter as the sandpaper itself. So you see, again, you can see the difference here. So that soft pad really got chewed up. And those things aren't cheap, so if, if that continues to be a problem, then I definitely won't be keeping this thing. Other than that, I love the control between the speed of the the um, sander, like the variables, variable speeds and the different grits. It actually really did offer a lot of control. 
But in the end, I went back to the RO90 and it uh, didn't disappoint. Like I said, the pad size is really great for this because it can get in those curves and, um, and have a bunch of different grits for it from 40 grit all the way up to 800. So it really is nice because I can do a lot of the sanding uh, with the sander. Now here you, uh, you see that I'm using an interface pad and that's basically just a foam, a foam pad that has Velcro on the front and back. It goes between the sander and the sandpaper and it's nice because it helps you wrap over curves and stuff like that. Um, other brands have them too. Some of them call them backing pads. Festo calls them interface pads. Um, but it was definitely nice because when you're using a flat pad like this, you tend to create little micro facets, um, little flat spots. And so the uh, interface pad helps to smooth those back out into roundness. Or if you were sanding like round legs or something like that. So here I'm just checking for smoothness, making sure there aren't any other rough spots. And the lighting changed because it got dark outside and I'm using one of my uh, LED work lights from Milwaukee. Totally awesome. All right, so now it's the next day. I'm just going to sand up the edges here real quick. Didn't do that the night before because I was focusing on the carving. I'm going to sand up the back here real quick as well. And then this piece will be almost done. Every once in a while you see me flip that switch on the sander. That's changing the different modes, which is great about that sander. I love it. Here I'm just cleaning it up with some mineral spirits. It's always one of my favorite parts because you can kind of see the beautiful wood come through the dust. The preview of what it looks like with a little finish on it. There's the piece after cleaning. I really was pretty happy with it. As always, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I've been having a blast doing these videos and conversing with all of you and kind of getting more subscribers and it's just it's a lot of fun it's it's fun to contribute instead of just consume media it's fun to contribute and show people things and and uh, meet friends and stuff along the way so thank you again if you are already subscribed thank you so much i really appreciate it uh, if you're not subscribed i hope you think about it um, check out some of my other projects and you'll also be able to find out when i release new videos um, also if you can like it and share it um, leave a comment that all helps get this in front of more people which is obviously the idea of sharing on the internet right now that i've said that at the end of one of my videos before oh wait <sighs> anyways thanks again like share comment rate all that fun stuff and uh, i will see you next time